climb in Lisbon, Portugal, the westernmost city in Europe. And talking of extremes, take a look at this. This is the new BMW 5 Series Gran Turismo, which the company says is part sedan, part four-wheel drive, and part GT. What to make of it? Let's find out. BMW claims the Gran Turismo creates a brand new segment niche. And it will certainly look like no other vehicle on the road when it reaches Australia in March 2010. It looks like the love child of BMW's coupe-like X6 four-wheel drive and the 7 Series limo. Even the seating position is a halfway house between those two contrasting vehicles. BMW calls it the semi-command seating position. So you're not quite sitting as high as you would be in an X5 or X6 four-wheel drive, but neither are you sitting as low as you would be in a sedan. The exquisitely crafted cabin is a subtle variation on the 7 Series interior and gets a similar range of toys, even if many of them will be optional. There's also equally vast legroom, thanks to a wheelbase length shared with BMW's limousine, while headroom is similar to that of the high-riding X5. The rear seats are also supremely comfortable, and they'll even fold down, create an impressively sized cargo area. which neatly brings us to the GT Smart two-piece tailgate. Essentially, you can open it either like a conventional sedan boot or like a lift back. Of course, it would be truly innovative if Skoda hadn't already invented the concept with its superb flagship twin door. Still, it's not a gimmick either way. No one does a six-cylinder quite like BMW, however, and two of them, one diesel, one petrol, join a V8 for the new GT's engine liner. The diesel we're driving does the best impression of a camel's drinking habits. And while it may also be the slowest of the GTs, it's still an ideal match for this new BMW. Any GT worth its name needs a torque-laden engine to ensure long-legged cruising. So how about 540 newton meters from this punchy 3-litre turbo diesel? That's pretty impressive, but it's also mated to a super slick 8-speed auto that ensures progress is absolutely effortless, regardless of speed or the shape of the road. When the bitumen starts to get squiggly, you can press buttons for firmer steering, sportier gear shifts and a stiffer suspension that extracts more from the GT's fine chassis. Of course, the Gran Turismo is a car designed mainly to cover great distances, in great comfort. And in normal or comfort modes, the GT lopes along freeways with kilometre crunching ease. With a starting price of about $140,000, the Gran Turismo could be viewed as a very expensive 5 Series. But I'd beg to differ. Better to think of it as more of a bargain price 7 series.